is what our hearts long for to be seated momentarily. Brother Tom, Brother Perry, come on up here. Just because we miss a servant do service doesn't mean God's any less. Or the church is any less. Amen. Amen. The Lord has still provided amply for our needs. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to invite you at this time to go ahead and bring that. And um, I wonder if there's any children that would like to give but just don't have anything right now. And they'd like to come on down. If, you, if you're near a young person, you ought to turn to them and give them a big smile and say, this is important. <laughs> Amen. This is important. Amen. 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 Well.
Well, we're going to receive our pastor to this pulpit here at this time. And we are going to preach with him. Somebody say amen. amen. Say, if you're going to. If you're going to help out our pastor today and you're going to be in his amen corner, we're going to have four amen corners today. Amen. And they're going to be all the corners that's in here. A amen. amen. There was, I saw one preacher said, every time I do like this, that'd be a good time for you to say amen. <laughs> well, let's try it. Ready? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's try it one more time. Amen. amen. That's very good. Amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're ready for our pastor to come speak to us, please. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, we ought to be engaging ourselves tonight. It's not a time to set back on our leaves, but it's a time for us to become more fervent than we've ever been for the cause of the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We are, uh, we are in revival. We're we're in revival. Amen. We're not perhaps in the depth that we want to be, but we're in revival, and we're going to grow in revival. We're going to excel in revival. We're going to do all that we can to continue the thrust that God has already given us. And um, we uh, this is a midweek service, and and we got room for more people tonight. Hey Amen. I know that this. Uh, Weather sometimes are, affects people, and I understand traveling is, a, is, a, is an important thing for safety, but uh, being in the house of God is important too. We have to, we have to weigh that out. Amen. First uh, Timothy chapter 2, I'm going to read a few verses here. Hallelujah. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications. Anybody know anything about supplications? Prayers. Intercessions. Anything? Anybody know about intercessions? And giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Hallelujah. I believe it's the will of God that all men be saved. Hallelujah. We have a mandate, amen, to reach out to the lost and to do all that we can to see men, women, and children saved. Amen. Praise God. And so there's a lot of things I want to share with you tonight, but I'm just going to uh, simply use the title of revival because I believe that it's just a, it's a general term that we use, but we need to apply it more specifically to our lives. Everybody said amen? amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we're thankful for every soul that's in this house tonight. We are confident by the Holy Ghost tonight that you will speak into our lives. And God, that you will help us in this moment. To, God, to grow in you, to excel in you, and to become, Lord, a greater revivalist, Lord, for thy cause and for thy kingdom. Bless us, Lord, this night. And Lord, let us not just be hearers of the word, but be doers of the word. Lord, we praise you tonight. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Anybody in the house love the Lord? Come on, let's give him some praise for a moment. Lord, we exalt you. We praise you. We glorify you. We lift up the name of the Lord. Oh, we rejoice in you. You're the God of our salvation. We're so thrilled, Lord, that you've been so wonderfully good to us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. He's worthy, isn't he? Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Hallelujah. I want to begin tonight just maybe perhaps bringing a little greater awareness to the fact that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. That's, we don't fight against our family. Amen. But we do do warfare against principalities and powers and spiritual weakness in high places. And I know that we 
heard these verses quoted, and you've probably read it a few times, but somehow I feel that we're missing somewhere of the severity of what's going on in our world. We're just not really getting the whole picture. And I'm not here to describe the whole picture to you tonight, but I, I would like for us to somehow to have a little better understanding that uh, there are people who are being uh, really greatly abused in this world that we're living in. I'm not talking about my mom and dad and brothers and sisters, but there is weakness in high places, amen, that is doing things tonight that if we really, really... Uh, knew what was going on, then we would just be beside ourselves and we probably wouldn't sleep through the night. I believe that something uh, would cause us to say, you know, that this is just not right. This is so horribly wrong that these precious little children are being abused and misused and, and, and sacrificed. To the God of this world. And, and on we could go. I'm not going there tonight. But I'm just saying. If we just really knew what was going on. Behind closed doors tonight. There would be something that would happen in us. And, and that happening should happen. Amen. Because we, uh, we know that there is these horrible. Horrific things going on. It, it ought to cause us to break. Amen. Through. Amen. To a place in prayers and intercessions. Amen. That we're. Calling on God. God send revival. Amen. To our world. Hallelujah. And I believe that there is a revival going on. But I, it comes on down to that we can say God send revival to St. Joseph, Missouri. Now, I'm not at liberty to discuss a lot of things today. But I, I, I rode a few hours with one of our state or one of our local policemen this week. And, and all the things that happened in just a few hours was just appalling. We understand the violence and the rage and all the things that are going on right here in our own city. We don't, we don't think that people that live in the upper class have some very serious problems that they have to deal with in violence. Well, we, th we drive past some of their gated communities and think, wow, man, they've got it really good and we don't understand, amen, how horrible some things are going on. But what we need is an understanding all of this is going on. I'm not talking about, amen, us living it and breathing it every moment of our life, but have an understanding that I have a responsibility to take the whole gospel to the whole world. And that means every neighborhood in this town. Come on, that means everyone that I can possibly be a witness to, I need to be tonight. Amen. Because there are evil spirits, amen, that are working under the direction of their ruler, the God of this world. And they are swarming this earth in attempt, amen, to thwart the plan of God. They are doing everything they can and what they can get away with. I'm here to remind us tonight that the only thing that is keeping the darkness back and evil from triumphing, amen, is the people of the church, people of the name, people who are Holy Ghost filled, amen. We are the only hope for this world. But if it wasn't for people that are praying and say, God, amen, send revival to Africa. Send revival, amen, to the remote parts of our world and to our cities. I'm telling you, darkness would overcome us if we were not praying. I believe that there is an awesome power in prayer. And we need to do the very best we can. Because what we're fighting against tonight, it cannot be stopped by armies and take tanks and planes and all the modern warfare it's not going to work it is, is a spiritual warfare this is one that's going to be fought on our knees in intercessions I'm talking about things that our eyes are not seeing tonight. I'm talking about invisible powers or powers, amen, that are operating off the time behind closed doors. Now, we see some of it spilling over. We see some of the things that are happening, amen, in our world. And, you know, it's almost to the point that we want to turn the news off or, or put the newspaper down because we get so much of that bad news. But let me tell you, can you imagine that being magnified a, a hundred times, a thousand times, or ten thousand times, or a million times? It's happening in our world. Luke ten nineteen says, Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. 
We don't have to worry and we don't have to fret, amen, if we are in touch with God. I'm talking about in a relationship with God, amen, and the Holy Ghost, amen, is flooding our souls and we have been infused by His Spirit, amen. We don't have to worry, but we do have an obligation and a responsibility to pray. We have a responsibility to fast. And I hope that many, uh, as a matter of fact, I'm hearing good reports of people who have been uh, starting to fast for the last few days. Say bad. And, I, and I, that's a good report. I love to hear people say, I'm going into a period and a time of fasting. And if you haven't, I pray that you would join tonight because we need to come together and unify ourselves. Amen. And, and fasting and praying because there's obviously, by the way of the word, there's things that are not going to happen except we fast and pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so when you make yourself available for prayer, you need to be aware tonight that you're launching an offensive against the forces of evil. Come on. The greatest way that we can fight evil, amen, is praying and working, amen, with the plan of God. It doesn't matter about checking the ballot, amen, on some political ballot, amen, that's going to fight evil, amen. It's beyond that tonight, folks. we got to understand that we are the church, Amen. We're the firstborn. Amen. We're a part of that church. Amen. Amen. That's going to make a difference in the earth. Amen. Because we are the people that are called out. We are the people who are called into the kingdom for such a time as this. Hallelujah. We have a tremendous responsibility. And so we're going to fulfill it. But we're launching out against these principalities, against these powers and, and against these rulers of darkness of this world amen that are sitting in high places and so i'm thankful tonight that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but they are mighty through god to the pulling down of strongholds we need to bring some strongholds down come on we, we need to get the bigger picture here tonight that there are some strongholds that need to be brought down Come on, I, I, I'm not, I, there's a list that's yay long. I can't name all of them, but you could start, amen, with child abusers and pedophiles and, and rapists and murderers and go on down the list, amen. But we've got to somehow, amen, impact our world, amen, as God has called us to impact our world. Come on, when he called 12 disciples and he, he filled them with the Holy Ghost and with power, amen, they turned their world upside down. We have the same mandate. We have got to turn our world upside down. We've got to fulfill the commission that God has given us. I realize tonight what we are engaged in tonight is not for sissies. But we got to understand tonight that there is a mighty power that God has given to us and that we can do great exploits for the cause of the kingdom. Prayer is so vital. It's one of those subjects, amen, that people don't want to hear. You know why you don't want to hear it? Your flesh doesn't want to hear it. But there ought to be something, amen, inside of us. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost right now. That ought to say, amen, I've got to have my time with Jesus. Amen, I've got to get alone with God. I've got to commune with Him. I've got to let Him know, amen, how I feel. And I've got to listen, amen, to what He has to say to me. Amen. So prayer is one of the highest privileges that is afforded a saint of God. Whether you're a, uh, a newborn uh, saint or you're a veteran for many years, prayer tonight is the catalyst for which breaks down and conquers and gives victory over the flesh. Come on, let me make it very clear tonight. Only operating in the Spirit is going to allow you Amen. To have victory over your flesh. There is nothing stronger, amen, than your flesh, than the Spirit of God. Come on, our, our, our flesh resists these things. But we have got to get our flesh under subjection to the will of God. That's the reason Jesus said, if you love me, you're going to keep my commandments. Come on, if you really want to be his disciples, you're going to deny yourself and take up the cross and follow him. Amen. There's going to be something happen. It's going to be born. Amen. Through the, this catalyst of prayer. Amen. That gives you victory over your flesh. 
Come on, let's, let's, be, let's be transparent here tonight. There's things that we battle with. There's things that would like to have an influence in our lives that would keep us from having apostolic revival. I'm talking about us getting to the place that we're desperate for God. It's not just we kind of like sort of maybe have revival. But I'm talking about we get to the place, amen, that I'm going to have revival. I am absolutely determined and committed to have revival. I would like to see this whole church, amen, unite together, amen, with that unification of the Spirit to say, we're going to have revival. We're going to have. Great revivals are born out of prayer meetings. Come on, I'm going to say it again. Revivals are born out of prayer meetings. Come on, when we can crank up the prayer. Come on, when we can offer up prayers. When we can call on Him then we can expect something to happen. Matter of fact, it moves us into a dimension of faith that we know that we're going to have revival. When we pray individually and collectively, souls will be saved and set free from the bondages of sin and iniquity. Come on, our prayers is personal victories over the devil. Come on, we, we all got to pray. We got to spend some time in prayer. Matter of fact, the scripture talks about us in much prayer. Much prayer. And so I'm challenging us tonight, amen, that if we're going to have the revival, and I'm telling you tonight, I'm, I, I'm really, really, really going to have revival. I'm going to have a personal revival. Come on, I, I'm going to have revival. I'm just going to join with Pastor tonight, amen, and have a revival. I'm not talking about two or three nights or a couple of weekends. I'm talking about an ongoing Holy Ghost apostolic revival. Amen. Where sinners are set free at an altar. Where people are baptized and infused with the power of the Holy Ghost. Come on. Prayer is one of the most rejuvenating, reviving, restful experiences that a saint could ever engage in. Don't let your flesh tell you Hey, man, that it's not worth it. It's worth every effort that you put into it. I understand tonight that your, your body's not much for it. Because prayer is work. But for the mind and the heart and the soul and the spirit, hey, man, it's a wonderful thing. Hallelujah. When we look into the book of Acts, we find that the disciples' behavior in the book of Acts Hey, man, changed from what it was from the Gospels. There's a sharp contrast. We find in the four Gospels that the disciples, hey, man, they were fearful. But when you went into the book of Acts, hey, man, they were courageous and they were bold. Hey, man, you find that in the four Gospels, the disciples, they would frequently, hey, man, have petty little divisions among them. But when you turn into the book of Acts, you find that these same men, they were strong and supportive, amen, and united together. Oh, before Calvary, they were scattered abroad. But we find that there was something that brought them together, these same men, and united them at Pentecost. Yes, there may have been a few little Divisions among them before Pentecost, but afterward they all shared the same vision. Amen. Because these men had not only just been with Jesus in these four Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, but when you turn to the book of Acts, you find Jesus in them. There's a difference, amen, than walking, amen, and knowing a little bit about Jesus than having Christ in you, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They were assembled together in Acts 1 and 4. They continued with one accord in prayer. Acts 1 14. They were all with one accord in one place. Amen. Acts 2 and 1. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Acts 2 and 4. And the twelve apostles stood together at Pentecost. Acts 2 and 11. And as it was in the book of Acts, so must it be here in 2014. We have got to stand together. We have got to be united together. It is a very strong 
force, amen, that the devil has to contend with, amen, when the church is united. Come on, somebody ought to say, I'm going to be united. I believe that the unity of the church is one of the most vital, amen, subjects that we can discuss, and yet it's perhaps one of the most neglected in modern churches. It wasn't neglected in the book of Acts. It was one of the key factors that brought apostolic revival. You find that for seven to ten days they continued together until the fire fell from heaven and propelled Christianity throughout the globe. Then we find after that they still got together and they broke bread daily in the temple, amen, and praying together. There is that unity. And so... We compare this schedule to our schedule today, and it's easy to see why we don't have all the unity that we need. Anybody got a clue? Our busy schedules doesn't permit it. Come on, we, we want to see a Pentecost. We want to see an apostolic revival. But who has the time? I, I'm looking at some people tonight, I hope that somebody would shout it, I'll take the time. I'll do whatever it takes. This is not just something I want to get a glimpse of. This is something I want to be a part of. This is something I'm determined to be a part of. Life is being lived in the fast lane, and unity has suffered as a result of it. You know why? Unity requires time. Unity requires relationship. Unity requires work. It requires us having an understanding of the importance of it. We have reached a place that it's not really hard to preach on faith. It's not really hard to preach about worship, but there's a challenge when we come to preach about unity. Come on, somebody look across the aisle and say, we got to be together. Let me explain what I'm talking about tonight. I'm talking about keeping the main thing the main thing. I have lived to see the day that people can get happier over a baby shower than a prayer meeting. Come on. I've seen people get more excited and become more attentive and have a bigger, amen, attendance to, to if you're having something to eat than a prayer meeting. Come on. I've, I've seen anniversaries and birthdays and you name it, amen, more attended than a prayer meeting. I'm talking about that is where the devil is trying to defeat us. We have got to be together in prayers and supplications and intercessions. I refuse to be defeated by the enemy. I am nowhere near ready to throw in the towel. I'm not even thinking about throwing in the towel. Why? Because God is and we're not debating his existence God is and by faith we understand that he created this world he framed it all together we understand that God is and therefore everything else is going to be okay because God is Amen. Then we know that He cares about me. He cares about my needs. But more than that, He cares about a world that's lost and dying and literally going to hell. I know there's not a lot said about hell, but I, I, I'm disturbed, amen, that hell is gaining ground tonight. We ought to be disturbed. As a body of believers, we ought to be disturbed that hell's in a building program. What's happening? Evil is abounding. I know what the scripture says. Where evil abounds, sin doeth abound. 
Amen. The grace of God abounds the much more. That is true. There's plenty of grace. But in the midst of a world, amen, that God wraps his arms around, there's still people that are going to hell. People have to avail themselves. That means that we need to help them. Because God is, amen, we understand that he invites us to cast all of our cares on him. He's inviting that person that's being abused tonight to cast their cares on him. He's inviting that person, amen, that's lost and then done and lost their way in this weary world, amen, to call upon his name. Church, I, I know that we live in the last days. People seem to reach a place of indifference and unconcern. They seem to be wrapped up in themselves and their own agendas. And, and those who should know better, they are growing increasingly carnal. We got people who have forgotten about the sacrifices of the past that's brought us to where we are today. This is an hour that the church has got to stand up. It's got to step out. Come on, it's got to stand firm. And you've got to fight the good fight of faith. Come on, this is an hour that the church has got to be the watchman on the wall sounding the heat of warning. It's a time that we must, the mandate is that we must pray and fast without ceasing. It's an hour, amen, that requires of us to hold fast the, the, this precious apostolic doctrine that has been given to us. Come on, somebody ought to say, I love it. Well, we, we need a heaven-sent Holy Ghost revival. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, you need one too. Come on, we need a Holy Ghost revival inside of us. Amen, because we, we are in a place, amen, because of the world's climate and condition. Amen, that there's a lot of dryness and barrenness and emptiness spiritually. We have to come to this place to say, I'm going to make a difference. I don't know if any of you have ever been to that place to, to say, you know, I, I really need to go on a diet. I need to change something. I've reached a point, this is it, something's going to change. Got to cut the fat. Got to do something. I, I'm looking... For somebody to say, Pastor, I've reached that place that I've got to have revival in my life. It doesn't matter what it costs me, but I've got to have revival in my life. I'm going to have to lay some things aside. I'm going to have to empty some things out. I'm going to have to change some circumstances. But I've got to have revival in my life. I'm not happy with the status quo. I can't go on like this on for weeks on end. I've got to have a reviving in my spirit. Come on, I'm not preaching to just the passive people of the hour. I'm preaching to the church of the living God tonight. Come on, in an hour where there is barrenness, where there's spiritual emptiness, where there is bankrupt values, amen, where there are just immoral lifestyles, amen, that are continuing on, amen. We need revival. I spoke to a man this week, and he says, I can't seem to wrap my mind around it and how that uh, men and women, they don't want to get married. And yet, gays want to get married. The psalmist said, revive us, O Lord. Revive us. I'm not worried about the economy. I'm not worried about politics. Those things don't concern me tonight. Amen. Yes, we're living in this world. What I'm concerned about is what's happening in the spirit world. What's happening, amen, to bring in and usher in a mighty wave of the Holy Ghost into this city. What, what, what's happening, amen, in our 
very physical homes. What are we doing for revival atmosphere and revival climate in our own homes and families? There comes a time that we have to disassociate ourselves with some things in this natural realm that we can be a partaker of heavenly things. I believe God has an anointing for every one of our lives. Amen. That if we would allow Him, amen, that He will revive us. Every one of us tonight should be on the cutting edge of spiritual effectiveness. After being in the ministry for 35 years, I understand that people can reach a place where they're not on the cutting edge. I understand that. But we can't live there, folks. Come on, if you're not being effective, amen, I'm challenging you tonight by the Word of God tonight, amen, to get yourself to a place uh, in a spiritual depth of God, in a spiritual height of God, somewhere in the breath of God, amen, that we find a renewing in the Holy Ghost. Come on, when was the last time you talked in tongues? In the Holy Ghost. Come on, I don't believe in self-tongues. I believe in Holy Ghost tongues. I believe in the spiritual manifestations of God. We can't allow a little slumber and a little sleep. Talking about being born again. If we're born again, let's live it. Come on, we're apostolic. We, we need to live it. There's too much spiritual deter deterioration that is setting in on lives. Come on, you don't need to be developing a bad habit. You need to be developing a holy habit. Come on, somebody needs to commit themselves to God. I'm going to, com I I'm going to form some more, amen, holy habits. I, I, I reached a place here that I, I really am. I'm disturbed about what's going on with media today. Media is a dangerous thing. I'm not really talking about the weather here either. I'm talking about this day of technology, of the things that people are participants of. Probably could hear a pin drop about now. I'm talking about us having a fresh encounter with God that our minds don't even go there. Come on, if you allow yourself to dabble in some things that you ought not to, amen, you're on a dangerous road. Come on, the Word of God tells us very explicitly, come out from among them and be ye separate and touch not the unclean thing. Touch not the unclean thing. I appreciate Brother Osborne's preaching the other night. We got... How many men went to the men's conference from here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We've got a ten men here, amen, that went to men's conference. You, you, you heard some of the things that he said. He, he, what are, I'm just going to use a little illustration. He talked about Herodias' daughter dancing before King Herod, not realizing how much the dance was going to cost. And he challenged every man, you better stop dancing right now because there's a payday that you've got to pay off somewhere. Come on, we have got to separate ourselves from sin. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? I know Jesus, I mean, he ate with sinners and publicans, and, and you know, that, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about personally separating yourself from evil, carnality, worldliness, ungodliness. I'm talking about us having an encounter in the Holy Ghost, amen, that drives us toward Him rather than allowing things to take us away from Him. We need a Holy Ghost revival. If there's any complacency in us, if there's any unconcern for lost souls, amen, we need a personal revival. Come on, if our love has grown cold, amen, we need God to stir us and set us on fire. Well, we ought to pray, God, set me a fire. Set me a blaze. 
Come on, if there's men in this world that could dump gasoline on their bodies and light themselves up and sacrifice themselves for causes of this world, why can't we ask God to fill us up full of the Holy Ghost and faith that we might be a flame in the night for Him? We can't afford to be at ease at Zion tonight. Come on, sin's lurking around every corner. Evil is at work 24-7. Come on, if we would just admit it tonight. God, I, I need some help here tonight. It's easy for us to look over and say, well, it's my wife that needs some help. Not my wife. She's a good spiritual person. But it's easy for us to say, well, I'm a little more spiritual than that person. And when we start comparing ourselves, we're not wise. It's foolishness. And we deceive ourselves. What we need to, to do is to have an evaluation just between God and us and say, God, you see any wicked thing in me? God, is there something I'm, I'm thinking about or I'm participating in or, or uh, I'm dreaming about that needs to change? Come on, some of you are looking at me like I'm crazy tonight. We, we can't afford to come like Laodicea and be paralyzed by self-sufficiency. Hey, I got a nice house. I got a nice car. I got nice clothes. Everything's nice. Everything's good. What do I, what do I need a revival for? I need a revival if I didn't have a place to lay my head tonight. Certainly don't want to be like Ephesus who left their first love. Come on, I need a revival that resurrects some things in my life that maybe I've let lie dormant that the Holy Ghost has given me over the years. Hello? Come on, don't, don't, don't miss what God has purposed in your life. And if there's things that he's purposed, don't let it lie dormant. You need to let that come out. And say, God, I don't know how it's going to work out. I don't know how it's going to happen, but I know what you put in my heart. God, I'm here, amen, yielding myself to you. I, I want you to receive the glory and the honor of anything that I can do to contribute to the kingdom of God. Come on. We, we need the anointing of the Holy Ghost so that we can release what God has put in us. Come on, Peter. John says, silver and gold have an none, but such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus. We need, amen, the anointing to, we can release the power of God. Maybe we just need the Holy Ghost to convict us and draw us back to an altar of prayer. Sorry, don't apply to me. Yes, it does. When the Holy Ghost calls and beckons. And if we're beyond conviction tonight we are in some serious trouble i think we ought to just pause for just a moment and ask god to send conviction afresh to our hearts jesus we so need conviction we need it we've allowed the lines to become blurred lord we have allowed ourselves to think in gray areas but, Lord, we're asking you to renew some fresh convictions in our life. Lord, that allow us to become more like you, that we can do the will of God. We can fulfill what you have for us to do. Hallelujah. 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 God, restore those convictions within our spirits. Hallelujah. Well, we need a revival of convictions. We need to be able to have that hunger and thirst, amen, for God's holy presence. I had a man to tell me the other day, he said, oh, you know all this stuff about 
you know, kind of clothes that women wear and men wear, you know. He said, ah, years ago, you know, it was one thing, but I, I've learned that you don't have to dress that way to please God. Where'd you learn that from? Yeah, who told you that? God's Word has a lot to say about those things. I said the Word of God has a lot to say about those things. It doesn't matter altogether. Amen, what a man has to say, but it doesn't matter what God has to say. And that's what I want in my life. I want God's word and God's will. And Lord, renew us to a place of holy dedication and a dedication of holy things. Create in us, oh God, a clean heart. Well, I, I, I want to please God more than anyone. Well, how, how do you feel about it? We're living in a world that everybody's so concerned about how they look and their appearance. People want to go commit suicide because they're not looking like some movie star. I tell you what we ought to be concerned about is how we look in the eyes of God. Come on. Do, do you care how God sees you? Well, we, we ought to really care with deep conviction. Hallelujah. Well, somebody ought to smile a while. <laughs> Brother Andre, stand up and shout hallelujah for us tonight. Hallelujah. Well, there is a price to pay for revival. But when revival flows, there's joy. <laughs> Come on. There's something that happens, amen, with the flow of revival. Yes, I know, amen, that we, we are pushing back the darkness and there's a spiritual warfare going on. But when God blesses and God increases, amen, there's going to be great joy when lives are changed and transformed into new creatures. Come on, when those that have been drug addicts, they find deliverance or prostitutes that find deliverance or alcoholics that find deliverance, there's great joy in the church. I wonder how many's happy tonight. Are you having a revival tonight? Amen. Come on, I realize there's some things I need to change. There's some things I need to adjust. And I, I want to be on track to do it. Come on, what we need to do is we need to work with God. Sometimes we get carried away with this idea, I'm working for God. Well, I want to work with God. I'm not so much as asking, you know, the Lord just help me to, to do His will. I want Him to take me by the hand and show me, lead me, guide me. I don't want to miss anything. He can explain it in detail if you let Him. Revive us, O oh Lord. Stir us. Move us. How many tonight are you determined to have revival? Not, not because I'm preaching this message tonight. I got three, four hands here. That's what I'm talking about tonight. We as a body, we have not moved together, amen, to have revival together. I wonder if everybody would join in tonight and let's have revival. Well, when we fast, everybody, everybody fast. Come on, if you get a letter from your doctor, we'll accept it. You can be exempt from fasting. I, I, I kind of got the feeling that's, that's what happened in, in Nineveh. Come on, the whole city came together. And this one of the areas that the enemy defeats us 
and causing little isms and schisms and little things. It's the little foxes that spoil the vine. I want us to have the greatest revival that any local assembly could ever possibly have. I close tonight. A lot more I would like to say, but time doesn't allow because we live off of schedules. Well, thank you. Anybody else going to get on board? I'm not asking for more time. I closed tonight. There was a editorial article, article in the uh, Pentecostal Herald this month. It told the story of how several years ago, Sister Nona Freeman told about a vision God gave her and uh, while she was a missionary in Africa. Any of you read that article yet? Brother Barry's read it. He read it. Interesting, interesting article. And, uh, and through that, she had an, an angelic being that appeared to her and talked to her about revival and had told her that uh, there were some things that was hindering revival. And we don't ever think, perhaps, in those terms. There was... There was 14 things that was hindering revival. Anybody, anybody name one? We probably could come up with some reasons why I'm not having revival. We need to eliminate all of those things to where we as a church can have revival. The man that was talking to her later, she couldn't remember all 14 of them, but she gave him 10 of them that she could remember. And I'm going to share those with us tonight. And I think we ought to work on the list. Resentment. Bitterness. Criticism. Judgmentalism. Am I going too fast? Lust, complaining, rebellion, jealousy, ambition, the desire to have a name of spirituality. No, the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. It's dangerous for us to think more highly of ourselves than we ought to. Well, I feel a position in the church, and I'm holy and righteous and godly, and there may be a dozen things that we need to work on. Giving us 10 things tonight. I wonder tonight if we could just spend a little time talking to God about. Here, here, here's where we're at. Either we need a spark to get us ignited. Or if we've got a little flame, we need to put another log on the fire. Or if we got a good fire going, we just need to pile on a whole lot more. And so wherever we're at. Hey, but why don't we ask God to help us in that respect and be willing to do whatever the Spirit bids us to do? I think it's worthy if I go over these ten things one more time. Resentment, bitterness, criticism, judgmentalism, lust, complaining, rebellion, jealousy, ambition, and the desire to have a name of spirituality. I realize I'm preaching to the choir tonight. But one day, we hope to be preaching to a house full of people who need God. Can we stand together tonight? I, I think we ought to all just find a, find a place to pray to God and not just a little lay me down to sleep prayer tonight, but really an earnest prayer. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. 
And I believe that God wants us to have some holy men. God wants us to be able to trust Him. God wants us to be obedient to Him. Hallelujah. 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 Just Jan, would you mind just playing some organ music tonight? Would you mind? Lord, help me tonight. Lord, I present myself to you. I present my body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you, which is our reasonable service. Help us tonight, Jesus. We're calling on your name. Lord, we need you tonight. We're desirous of you. We're seeking after you, God. We're seeking your mind and your will. Lord, we're asking you to help us to empty out all the impurities in our life. Lord, we are praying right now, Lord. Remove the chaff from our life. We repent of our carnality. We repent of our unconcernedness. We repent because we haven't done more. We haven't committed to more. Lord, we repent tonight. God, that we're not experiencing personal revival. But Lord, we're asking you to renew in us and spark a fire in our hearts and in our lives. Oh God, help us tonight, Lord, to create a fire of the Holy Ghost, Lord, in our lives that leads us forward. God, move among our children and among our youth, our adults, our families. Unite our families together in this church. God, let us be together one, one with you, Lord. Help us to be uncompromising in our convictions. Help us, Lord, tonight, God, to allow you to work in our lives every day. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. Lord, of the days that we've wasted, the opportunities that we've wasted, Forgive us, Lord. Lord, we haven't carried a greater burden for the lost. Shake us. Awaken us. Help us tonight. Somebody ought to cry out to the Lord. 
Jesus. Jesus. I've got to have you, Lord. Jesus. Jesus. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost is listening to somebody's prayer tonight. Come on, this is a good opportunity to let the Lord know how you feel. This is a good opportunity to express yourself to the Lord. Come on. We're not just phrasing pretty words right now, but we want to phrase that which is meaningful, that which has purpose. Jesus. Holy Ghost. There's a lot of things that we should be asking the Lord for tonight. I'm talking about for our personal revival. We've learned how to look at the lost and not bat an eye. We've learned how to go through life calling ourselves Christians and never shed one tear over the lost. Oh, yeah, if it was if it was my baby. I'm talking about somebody you don't know. Somebody you barely know. Who's going to intercede for them? Who's going to pray for the masses of people that don't know Jesus tonight? There's power in prayer. Well, there's so much that we can do if we utilize what we have. I don't want us to ever reach a place that we schedule God out of the service. What I mean by that, we kind of go by a schedule, but we got to forget our schedule sometimes. We just got to let God have His way. Be careful. Be careful with your spiritual life. There may be times God's just going to test you. Be careful. Be careful with the internet. God might be just testing you. Well, there may be a moment there that you may not feel the Holy Ghost convicting you because God stepped back and said, Man, now we should have formed enough convictions in our own selves then we know better. God knows what we're going to do and what we're not going to do, but we need to learn our limitations. And there may be times that God will just allow us not to feel conviction from Him, but it should be some convictions that's formed in us. Joseph had some convictions when he was in Potiphar's house. He didn't have the Holy Ghost, folks. Come on, we got we got to have some morals. You know, some people got morals without the Holy Ghost. How much more we we ought to form some strong standards in our life, and to be thankful we got the Holy Ghost to help us. Hallelujah. Well, I'm going to stop preaching. Thank you for allowing me to preach to you tonight. You're not hard to preach to. You're good people. We're family. 
I think we ought to express that a little bit more. I don't, I don't have no judgment against anybody in this building. I have no criticism against anybody in this building. Don't want to form any. Don't want to allow any. Come on, if there's anything that we need to deal with, we need to deal with it. We don't want a situation like Achan to keep the, the Pentecostals of St. Joseph from having a revival. Here's the warning. We're praying to that end. Everybody understand what I'm saying? Everybody, we've got opportunity right now to get everything right with God. If we're hiding and covering some things up, at some point the Holy Ghost is going to reveal it. We better deal with it right here, right now. Stand with us. It's good to have Rick with us tonight. Amen. Bless you, Rick. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I want us to pray. And after we pray tonight, why don't we take time to express a few kind words that is real to our brothers and sisters here tonight. Lord Jesus, we thank you. Thank you that we're blessed and privileged to be a part of the kingdom of God. But Lord, anything that lacks in us, we're asking you to help us with it. God, anything that needs to be dealt with, help us to deal with it. Lord, we're asking you to bring it forth a Holy Ghost apostolic revival in every one of us. Lord, especially throughout this assembly, God, that fires would burn across this city, across this district, and around the world. God, let us be used of you. God, we pray for your mind and will to be done. Bless this people. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen.